Oh, nerve-wracking. <laughs> for you or the dog? Well, for me. <laughs> he's been calm this whole time, which is a good sign, hopefully. I thought his run last week was really good in defeat. Um, obviously, needs a little bit of luck how he navigates through the back, th navigates through them from the back, but he's a quality dog and box one's going to be a massive help. Yeah, I think it will be. But hopefully he can just get out nice and clean and hopefully it's just a nice clean run overall. Best of luck. Thank you. Tony Zammett, Val Policella, she surprised everyone just how well she came out last week. Repeat of that, we'll see her go very close. Yeah, it was very good to see her begin like she did. Um, that's the first time she's ever led in a 700 race and got to the line well. So if she can repeat that type of um, beginning, um, obviously there's a few strong finishes in the race, but, you know, it makes it, it, makes it an improvement for her having a second look out of them boxes. So, um, yeah, we're just hoping that she can do it out of the boxes again and uh, that'll put a ride right in the race. Best of luck to Tony and we'll quickly grab Dustin Drew. Dustin, she's getting along in the tooth old girl but she's still racing very well. Yeah, no, she's going good. This is probably, I think of all the races she's made, this is probably up there, probably one of the better ones. So, but um, look, she's going to have a work cut out, you know, it's a good race and um, yeah, she'll give it a best shot. Best of luck to them as well. Moraine Susie, she's the fastest qualifier. She's going to need plenty of luck in the early stages because of those box manners. But if she gets any clear air, she'll be powering home. Yeah, definitely. It's all about the space she can get at the start, get to the rail, and then she should be right in the race. Good luck. Michelle Nolan, a big night for you coming up. How's the girl feeling? Yeah, good. She's feeling good. We'll see how she's backed up. Best of luck. Team with Mrs Avenger, one of the surprise winners last week. How are we liking her chances going into tonight? Pretty even field, so... Whoever gets the brakes early, I suppose. And the New South Wales too, Palawa King. How's he going, Jack? Yeah, let's hope. We'll find out in a minute. Hopefully. Get him coming out a little bit better than Marie. Oh, no. As long as we just come out and miss him more, will we? And Paul Bartolo finally, Ritzer Piper. How's she feeling? It was a good run yeah, last week. Feeling good. She should go all right. Best of luck. That was a word from each of the runners heading into the bold trees tonight, boys. Let's come back to you for the last of the market updates. Well, getting the shakes here late is the favourite Zohar Bale. was two fifty this morning, now out to $3.20. The late money's come for Moraine Susie, who's now best backed in the tab book. four sixty into $4 here late. And Palawa King, the other that's popular, had been $5. Now, in fact, gets out to $6. Now, of course, if you can't be here on track, you might as well head to the Melbourne Cup hub, where you've got bowl tree specials galore, including a head-to-head -head special with Val Policella and Moraine Susie. We can get $1.80 Val Policella or $2 for Moraine Susie. Here we go, Group 1 Racing about to get underway on Melbourne Cup night. This is the Bold Trees final. Good luck with your investments. Zohar Bale's our favourite as we join Dan Hibbard for the call. Second elected 440 and Val Policella is the Queensland hope is a $4.80 chance. $6 Palawa King next best from Box 7. They get set. The first of the Group 1s tonight. 105,000 to the winner. The bold trees, they're ready to go. The green light is turned on and the lure's on the roll. They're set to run. Ready. Racing very slow. Palawa King out quickly was get ready. Doran Zohar fails up to second and really close. Ritzer Piper gets to third. Palawa King recovered to fourth. Untap was next, followed up by Moraine Susie, Val Policella, and Mrs. Avenger. Get ready, Dora takes them to the back, leads out. Charging up on the inside was Palawa King. Zohar Bale on the outside. Fourth was Ritzer Piper. They're clear then on untapped and further back. Moraine Susie running on. Palawa King took the lead off the back. Leads out by two. Trying to come through. Ritzer Piper and Zohar Bale. Palawa King in front. Palawa King holding on and wins. Palawa King won the bold trees. Ritzer Piper in a photo with Zohar Bale for second and third. Fourth in was Moraine Susie. And she roared home. Val Policella, Mrs. Avenger. Get ready, Dora untapped. Palawa King's done it in 41 and 75. Jackie Smith, you've been hammering down the highway week in, week out. You've won a Group 1 in Melbourne, the Bold Trees, and Palawa King, what a run that. Yeah, he went nice. Yeah, nah, I didn't come last week, the boss did, so I've got to uh, congratulate her as well. Well, let's walk and talk. Uh, we've got plenty to discuss. He, he was beaten as the shortest price favourite of the night. What did you make of his run last week, firstly? Uh, no, that was all right. We knew we were a run short and just yep. hoped he'd do enough to get through, so... Well, mate, you've been travelling up and down the highway to just about every feature race that you could possibly get a car to. What does it mean to come to Melbourne on Melbourne Cup night and win a bold trees with this boy who's, who's such a special dog? 
Yeah, I know. It's one off the bucket list. I've never won a group race here, so yeah. he's, done, he's done Melbourne in here for me, uh, Meadows in here, so... Yeah. Well, he's been, he's been a phenomenal talent down the back. Talk us through the run, because Zohar Bale jumped as well as Zohar Bale had began, and I thought, personally, he was the dog to beat, and then Palawa King gave him Windburn down the back. He's got a big motor. When uh, we get the preparation right, he's very hard to beat. Well, he's, he's such a versatile dog too, your boy. Like, he's won races over 500 metres at Wentworth Park where he's charged past free-for-allers, and then he can do it over 700. That's a special canine. He's just got a big motor, mate, and he uh, can sustain that speed for a long time, so that's what you want. Hey, what's the key? What's the key to success? You've been just, just one of the best trainers for such a long time. What's the, what's the number one key that we can tell the viewers on racing.com? Do this and you could be Jack Smith. Uh, no, you just you just got to be lucky. To, at least people just give us the dog and we, uh, we don't take that for granted, you know, like, and, and just if you get one, they tend to give you another one and if you can keep it rolling that's the main thing you're a very humble man congratulations on a bold trees win with palawaki thanks mate thank there you there we go jack smith zohar bale will be about it and Palawa King, well, geez, it looks ugly out of the boxes the first time there, Don. Of course, he was comfortably the last one to go, but everything from that moment on, he articulated to absolute perfection, and he's got there by a length. Yeah, absolutely. And we spoke about um, the the different uh, winning distances of Palawa King, winner of the 500, winner of the 600, winner of the 700. So despite what was a tricky start, clearly has the motor uh, to be able to win over that distance. It was a fantastic performance. The race certainly did change completely. Complexion. Get ready, Dora G. She gave her back as some sort of side out in front until she just felt the pinch a little bit late. Kat Ernst, if you can hear us, what did you make of that win? Absolutely phenomenal by Palawa King. I think we were saying before the race that he really needed to sharpen up off the back of that uh, heat performance last week because he was pretty flat, uh, beaten in the slowest heat of the night. But as Jack Smith just said, he knew that he knew himself that the dog uh, obviously needed the run. He, he'd been freshened up prior to that and had gone uh, at Wentworth Park over over the 520 metres, so really needed that gut buster last week and it showed tonight he, he settled in a much more prominent position, which um, is good for him because he'd been falling out and missing the start six lengths um, and his last couple down here and at the Meadows, so uh, much more of a relief and when you saw him charging up into third position, uh, just going through the catching pen, you knew he was going to be right in it. And, Jack Smith, he absolutely loves coming down and giving it to the Mexicans down here. He's one of the true <laughs> characters of Greyhound Racing. He comes from a, a small little town called Forbes. He, of course, trained Feral Frankie, this bloke's father, and Errol Hughes, who owns it. He, he's another salt of the earth bushy. Um, also lives in Forbes and quite a remarkable story, boys, with this dog. Errol um, had the mother, Maximum Doss, and she was only very plain on the racetrack. She, um, she wasn't anything exceptional by any stretch of the imagination and Errol actually had another straw for her to go and she was being inseminated on a, a, the particular day and they went to do the procedure and realised that the paperwork hadn't been completed right and they couldn't use a certain straw so Errol being friends with Jack actually called Jack and said oh what do I do and Jack said well take here I'll sign you over a feral Frankie straw just use that on her so it was a uh, fate you could say that they actually went to Feral Frankie and it's re resulted in a, a dog called Palawa King and I think there was only two in the litter, this fella and Palawa Queen who has plenty of talent in her own right but just a remarkable story about this, how this dog even came to exist and to think of now the ride that he's taken these two bushmates from Forbes on, it's just absolutely remarkable. This is what you want to hear out of these big group one stories like that. That's fantastic. Palawa King, he's now gone on to win just over $650,000 in prize money. Absolutely. And it caught me with a bit of a stutter. I saw the late money coming in on the tab book. It was $5. I was expecting it to be reduced to 4 but the tab traders went the other way. They went $5 yeah. out to 6 They were happy to offer a price for it. So if you managed to get on Palawa King at $6 there late in the trade, uh, you'd be absolutely laughing. So $6 tab fixed odds and indeed $6 on the local tote. That was a fantastic win. Well done if you got on Palawa King. And that's the first of the Group ones. What's what's left in store? I think there's plenty more still to come. We've still got the Melbourne Cup a couple of races away, so we're really looking forward to that. Up next, though, we've got race number nine in 16 minutes from now. So we'll dissect the first of the group ones. We'll butter up for race nine, and we'll join you shortly to talk you through it.